Hello. I wanted to do a recap of the um, common themes in the churches that I watched this weekend, um, or that I attended, or both, a combination. Before I forget, so today's Tuesday. Um, I attended one church on Saturday, attended a second one on Sunday, swang by a third one real quick just mostly for communion. And then I watched another one online. And then I had to go rewatch the one that I had swung through for just for communion. I had to watch them online too, because I missed most of the service. But um, there were definite themes, which I love that when that happens. And I'm telling this two days, two, three days after the fact. So it's going to lose all the punch. Like it's not going to sound exciting to anybody just because I've waited too long. At the same time, I had to process it. So that's why I didn't want to talk about it too quick. Um, so anyway, I just want to just quick gloss over what the main themes were. Because whenever there's patterns like that, where two or three churches are talking about the exact same thing on the exact same weekend, I'm like that God is clearly <laughs> like, that's something I need to pick up on. Right. Um, so in no particular order, I have my notes and this will probably be a complete mess and not make sense to anybody. But I want to have it recorded even just for myself about what the themes were. Um, in short, there was a lot about how the gospel, right, God transforms us. Um, to be like Christ, to be like little Christs from the inside out. And um, over time, it's a slow process. It's not instantaneous. And it's not necessarily visible to others. It can take a long time for that process to play out enough where it might be visible to other people. Um which is why it's so important not to then judge other Christians, especially a newer Christian, because it's not something you can necessarily see from the outside. You might be able to, but you might not be able to. And you don't want to assume, oh, that person is stuck or that person isn't progressing because I'm, I, I see a snapshot of them one day of their life and I'm going to make a judgment as if I'm the judge. You know, you want to really be conscious of the fact that it's not up to that person to transform themselves, that it's God and it's the power of the spirit that's doing the transformation. And it happens slowly and at an appropriate pace over time, starting from the inside out. Um, that was a common theme. A lot of the churches touched on that in various different ways. Um, and then I took it to other places because I had a few days to think about all this. Um, that Jesus is doing the you come as you are, imper imperfect and flawed as you are. And I call you my beloved and I want you to be loved. Come be loved, my beloved, um, as you are, flawed and imperfect. I already love you the way you are. And um, there is not like a call from Jesus to um, go be go be perfect and then come to me. Right. That's what the world does. The world's like, you're not good enough. You're not doing this right. Go away. Let me teach you. Let me show you the way to be before you can come back. That's what the world is like. That's what the devil's like. Um, but God is not like that. God is like, I see you exactly how you are. You're an imperfect little mess. And I love you exactly as you are already. Come. Right. Follow me how you are. God will handle the changing in God's timeline. Like it's just, there is an acceptance first. Um, there is a like, Jesus accepts us first as the precursor to then the change that happens later, right? And um, Jesus sees you as you are, flat and imperfect and um, loves us as we are and then changes us slowly. And it's not the, the you go change yourself first. You go strive to be perfect and then I'll accept you. That's the world. That's the enemy. Um, that was a common theme. And then, so we should do that to others. Love them as they are. 
flawed and imperfect. Um, cause we're supposed to be like Jesus, right? And, um, we don't demand more from other people than Jesus demands from us. And then I heard a pastor talked about, and I kind of zone, like I didn't pay attention as closely as I should have to this part. I think I was probably, I, a lot of times I listen to these messages while I'm in the shower, but he was, I believe he was saying something about the transformation of a caterpillar into a butterfly. And if I'm remembering correctly or heard it correctly, he was talking about the stage between where it goes from a caterpillar to a butterfly. It's like the inside that cocoon. I don't know if he was saying it like turns into like pure mush or it's like it completely changes the composition of what is in that cocoon. It's not like it just is like a caterpillar that just all of a sudden grows wings. It's like the caterpillar ceases to be a caterpillar, turns into some sort of a mush, and then out of that mush, then a butterfly emerges. So it's like, he, I think that's what he said. I, I was distracted, to be honest. But it was something like that. And I'm like, that's a really good point, talking about that transformation process. So again, which is why we don't judge from the outside. Somebody looking in from the outside, they might just see the cocoon. Somebody looking in from the outside, they might see your mush. Right. Or they might even see you as the caterpillar going into the cocoon. They might see you at a stage and be like, oh, well, you're not a butterfly yet. So you're failing at the Christianity. You're just too milky and you're just not good enough yet. Go away and come back later when you're doing a better job being a little Christ. Right. That's not Jesus. That's not loving. That's not Christ-like. Jesus is like, I understand the whole process of where you're going from caterpillar to mush to butterfly and... And I'm cool with you at every stage, right? That's more loving. Um, so again, just so many examples. And none of the churches spoke about it of don't judge from the outside, but a lot of them talked about the transform transformative, transformational um, change of the spirit and of God and the power of the gospel and all of that um, to, to change your life over time, slowly. So that was a definite common theme. And then we just have to stay open and surrender to that. We, um, you know, follow the Lord and believe that Jesus was resurrected and get adult baptized and just do the thing. And we just, we, we take the appropriate steps, but it's not like it's us transforming ourselves. Um, we're just staying open and receptive, um, and following Jesus. Um, and then in our weakness and in our imperfections, then it like it, there's purpose in that too. Like we screw up or whatever, like God's strength is seen through those imperfections. So there's purpose in that too. There's purpose in our failures, there's purpose in our struggles, there's purpose in our, our failings in those ways because that's how God can shine through that stuff through the cracks. Um, and then one of the pastors was talking about, I think I was reading, I think I called that guy Zacche Zacchaeus or something, but really his name is Zacchaeus. So I was saying his name wrong. So I just want to just clarify that. Thought it was interesting they talked about that same guy. Um, and then I was realizing too, there are no perfect churches. There are no perfect pastors. Right. And there's no perfect people. And in the same way that God is moving through us and changing us and growing us and transforming us as individuals. It's not like there's the perfect churches out there or the perfect pastors out there. Oftentimes God is changing and growing and transforming those pastors at exactly the same time as we're being changed. And sometimes God is changing those pastors through us, through them having to deal with us or through us having to deal with them, right? Because you got all these imperfect people running the, going to church and running the churches, like everywhere, like nobody's perfect, right? And so you got to have patience with your pastors and your pastors have to have patience with you because everybody is flawed and it's, it's a lot to deal with. <laughs> um, so that's a thing. I did notice that there was one pastor that has a pattern of constantly judging other churches. And you almost, it's, it's amazing how you can listen to these pastors for years and they will, 
they'll have their own similarities where they just keep doing something forever, right? And this one particular church was doing the usual of judging other churches, how some churches are this way and other churches are that way. And in essence, our church is right in the middle doing it perfectly and being the judge of other churches. And that rubs me the wrong way. Like, I want to react to that. And yet, I have to remember that that might be that particular pastor's weakness is his focusing on the prop what he perceives the problem to be instead of focusing on God and um and I'm I have to just trust that God will eventually work with that pastor in that area of growth like you don't get to be the judge of the other churches you just don't and your church is not better than the other ones and um it's not up to me to get annoyed with or react to or get in that spiral of the devil of, of irritation, right? I can just trust the process and trust God and know that, again, there are, no, there are no perfect churches and there are no perfect pastors. And it's not up to one church to judge every other church. And it's not up to me to judge the pastors, Right? So that's just, like, let let it go. <laughs> it's okay if they're not all saying things that you um, resonate with. That was the same church that talked about the butterfly, and that was a perfect example. So it's kind of that piece of, like, what I had to do at the beginning of the Christianity. It was just take what fits, leave the rest. Like, you're not, not everything is going to always be uh, feeling good or feeling right, you know, along the way. But let it go. Let, let, let what is yucky go. Because otherwise you'll end up in the spiral of the devil. And you do not want to get in a reactive spiral of the devil. That's not how God works. God is a co-creative God. And the devil is a reactive energy. And you don't want to um, get hung up on the word energy. And you don't want to um, be in a reactive place. So... That was it. A lot of like letting go of bitter roots. Don't don't get stuck having bitter roots. And again, then like going back to letting it go. Um, being around non-reactive Christians, non-reactive pastors. There are, my own self included, plenty of people who get stuck in this place of reaction, reacting to other people, reacting to other things. I don't want to be honestly led by pastors who are reactive pastors. Um, and I don't want to be hanging around other Christians who are reactive Christians, and yet I see that in myself, too. Um, but I definitely want to try to be in a place of creation and to be around people who are in a place of creation, you know, with their eyes on God, not their eyes on whatever, whatever they perceive the problem to be, or I perceive the problem to be. Trust the process, trust God. Um, to engage my family, like that was one of the pastors talked about, like doing stuff next. Not really in a take what's your next step kind of a way, but just like, um, you know, they have, sometimes they give you assignments, so like this is what I want you to work on this week. And um, for me, it was engaging my family because I had been in this place of uh, taking a break from the stressors with my immediate family and um feeling partially that I needed a mental health break from that situation but then also knowing at the same time that the burden is sort of on me if of seven of us I'm the only Christian as new to Christianity as I am there's it's almost like there's a responsibility on you to be the one to solve the problem even though you didn't cause it you're not the reason for it and yet you're the only christian and the way he said it was like your friends and family don't know jesus and i thought that was such a good point because most pastors a lot of times when you go to church it's as if the pastors speak to people like oh Everybody in the audience is Christian. Everyone you know in your family is a Christian. Aren't we just so blessed to be, whatever, however they word it, you know, saved by the blood of Christ and they're just raw, raw for the Christianity. And this guy was like, look, 
Your friends and family don't know Jesus. Your next door neighbor doesn't know Jesus. And I'm like, that's true. All of that is true. That's very true. All of that is true. I'm one of the only people in my world who is a Christian, even if I'm new. And so it's like there's a responsibility there where, not where you have to strive or like do a bunch of stuff, but there's just, you can't, there's just, you can't just do nothing either. You know, they're all going to do nothing. You got to be the one to do something. So then it kind of, without me even realizing it, tied into what the other church, because they were talking about family, but they were defining family as you're the family of God, right? You're your church family or the brothers and sisters in Christ or whatever they were saying that that's first and foremost the most important and then your regular family second. I would wholeheartedly agree. That's never been a hard concept for me. Um, and so I tried to spin it, like not tried to spin it, but I thought of it a different way than um, after the fact because I was realizing that anything outstanding with anyone church family first and regular family second is kind of how I took it um I have been thinking a lot about how my life has gotten harder since becoming a Christian and and I realize that's a sensitive subject like you want to be like oh you become a Christian you just go from like a horrific human being into just a perfect person and 100% that's not true absolutely that's not true you can be a good person before and then become a Christian and still be a good person after there is though a very real piece about the Christian walk being hard being difficult being better in a way where you would never undo it and you're grateful for it and it's very rewarding and yet being extremely hard and difficult in a lot of ways that people simply don't don't talk about enough. Your life can get harder in so many ways. And I wish the churches talked about that more because that is a brutal reality for a lot of like newer Christians that nobody prepares you for the fact that life gets harder. And it's just like probably not the kind of thing you want to say to people as you're trying to convince them to become a Christian. At the same time, it's true. Life can get harder in a lot of ways, and that's just something I have been really dealing with this weekend, really struggling with hard. Like, how much worse did my life get? Seriously. In every, in all of these ways, how much harder is life now? And, um, but again, that's a different topic for a different day. But what I found interesting was one of these... Um, churches did this thing where they go around the audience and they, they let the people in the audience speak. And one of the guys in the audience spoke up about how um, something that stood out to him was how Jesus accepts you as you are. Flat and imperfect as you are, like that's how Jesus accepts you, which was the exact same theme as, as these other, some of these other churches. And I'm like, that's interesting that the guy brought it up. Like the spirit just felt like it, like it was just moving through him about these similar topics um so that wasn't one where like the pastor was saying it but they just came through this random human being and I'm like I liked that common theme there um two of the churches sang that same song um I don't know if it's called build my life or worthy or whatever but it's like I left one church they were singing that and then I went to another church and they were singing that and I'm like that's super weird I always think that that's so weird when they're singing the same songs on the same day happens a lot though um and then the last little bit is oh the stuff about phoebe in romans 16 keeps coming up i don't know why and then um oh that apparently i have some unhealed pain uh, regarding the opinions of others and and i like to think i'm the kind of person who's like i don't care what they think about me but I think that's just my defense mechanism kicking in. But in reality, of course, I do like anybody else. And it, what hurts me is when I'm not seen correctly. It's like if you're an elephant and somebody sees you as a rabbit, it's so it's so off base that it's like I have pain surrounding that. Like I'm an actual elephant and you're seeing me as a rabbit. 
this is causing me pain like you cannot see clearly like can't you see me I'm an elephant and um you would think that that wouldn't hurt me but it apparently does like I have unhealed pain around the opinions of others I didn't even realize it until this pastor started talking about dealing with the opinions of others and then I was like starting to cry and I was like it was like striking a nerve all the things he was saying and I'm like sitting there in front of him and I'm like can he see me because I was like six rows back and I don't normally go to this campus and I'm like can he see me? I don't think he can see me. Probably because the lights, he can't see me. I don't want to cry, but <laughs> it's just horrible. I was like, can he see me or not? Because I'm trying not to cry here. But regardless, the sensitive subject was about the opinions of others. And, and that's such an interesting thing because it does happen as well with the YouTube. Here I am putting myself out here for everyone to assess me and judge me and give their opinion about how they think I'm doing, judging from the outside. And you kind of have to learn how to get a thick skin and deal with that. More and more and more. Like, people are going to think whatever they're going to think, and I have to just be okay with it. And I have to not, again, get in that spiral of the devil, of reaction, and just be knowing the truth of me and letting trusting that God knows the truth of me and not worry about the people who are going to get stuck judging from the outside and um they can't like they say god sees the heart people don't people don't see the heart people see the outside and they judge right they look at the caterpillar mush and they think they make an assessment and then they gossip and stuff it's like you can't even convey to them like can you not you know because that's just where they're at and what they do and i'm sure i do it too it's just like i think human nature but so that's something I need to work on, not reacting or being hurt by the um, opinions of others. Um, again, who are just all they can see is the outside. These are especially people who don't know me, literally don't know me, don't interact with me. And, and again, I realize you're putting yourself out there with the YouTube videos, right? I'm doing that. But at the same time that you're seeing me like 15 minutes out of my day. You're not seeing the other 23 hours and 45 minutes of my day. I mean, death, that's, it's a sliver, even if it might seem like a lot, because maybe it's a daily video or something. Like, it's a sliver of my life. And it's, it's my understanding at that moment in time, and I might go post the video, and God might speak something to me, and I might have a different understanding a half hour later. That's the reality of life. So people need to remember that we are... Tr being transformed uh, it, on a continual basis and these especially these videos these are just a snapshot in time so i might feel differently about all of this an hour from now right and then what else that's it those are all the different things so i didn't clarify you know which church said what or whatever but i just wanted to hit up the themes anyway so those were kind of the overlaps where more than one church talked about those particular topics in the same weekend. And so I needed a couple days to process because that was a lot of stuff and a lot of overlap. And um, anyway, so that is that. I hope you have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.